Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm going to talk to you today about the Nisei linguist in World War II, Japanese-American linguist. Uh, many of these, almost all of these, ling all of these linguists, I should say, all of them were born in the United States, and some went to Japan uh, for elementary and high school, but all eventually made their way back to the United States, okay? And when World War II broke out, they fought on the side of the United States, and how they fought on the side of the United States is they translated a lot of key Japanese military documents. They also interrogated a lot of Japanese prisoners of war. And Dr. James McNaughton, a former historian in the United States Army, he was a soldier, and his job as a soldier was a historian. Um, Dr. James McNaughton, he wrote an excellent book called Nisei Linguist, and that is a fantastic book, and I highly recommend that people um, read it. Uh, the, it's about every Japanese American Veterans Association has endorsed that book. Uh, Terry Shima, who fought um, in Europe with the 100th Infantry, Infantry Battalion, 442nd Regimental Combat Team, he uh, endorsed the book. He says it settles the question of loyalty. Um, the question of loyalty that at the time that a lot of Americans didn't care about or that didn't think that the Japanese Americans harbored. Things have changed a lot now and have changed for the better, um, which is good. And Jap you talk to many Japanese Americans, they don't hold any grudges or any ill will um, towards what had happened. But, okay, one of the Nisei linguists that fought for the United States against Japan was a guy named Thomas Sakamoto. And he attended a military high school in Japan. And he did so well at this high school that after the high school, he was offered a commission in the Imperial Japanese Army, but he turned it down. He said, the United States is the land of my birth, and I cannot do something like that. So the Japanese major waved a samurai sword in his face and basically cursed him. But Thomas Sakamoto made his way back to the United States. And first, he was drafted into the Army, and he was in an anti-tank company. But some soldiers visited him and asked him to translate a Japanese uh, military field manual. And because he attended military high school in Japan, he could translate it fairly easily. So he ended up being a linguist in the United States Army. Um, also, Bob Kubo, uh, he's from Hawaii. And he, he honestly wanted to go into combat. And he tried to join the 100th Infantry Battalion, 442nd Regimental Combat Team. But his language skills were so good, even though he tried to fail the linguist test, that he, um, he was put as a linguist, and he did amazing things in the Battle of Saipan. He persuaded many Japanese civilians to surrender, and he would go repel himself uh, down to go into caves and persuade uh, Japanese civilians to surrender. And because he did that, he got a lot of key information as well. And he was awarded the, he was awarded the Bronze Star for his bravery in the Battle of Saipan. And... That's how amazing of a linguist he was. Now, you go to the Battle of Iwo Jima, there was a guy named Terry Takeshi Doi, and he wanted to fight the Imperial Japanese Army in combat. He wanted to show his loyalty to the United States that much. Um, he split time between the United States and Japan. He was born in the United States, and um, he lived in Japan for a while and was conscripted in the Japanese Army in the late 1920s. Um, but when he came back to the United States and after Pearl Harbor was attacked, he wanted to fight the Japanese in combat to prove his loyalty. And while he could not do that, based on a lot of rules at the time, he did go into the cave, sometimes armed with nothing but a knife and a flashlight, and persuaded many Japanese soldiers to surrender, which was not an easy task because in the Samurai Code of the Bushido, surrendering is an extremely dishonorable thing to do. But because these Nisei linguists um, had extensive knowledge of Japan and its culture, they were able to do that. They were able to, to get a lot of Japanese soldiers to surrender. And Terry Takeshi Doi um, did just that. Was able to get a lot of the a lot of the soldiers to a lot of the Japanese soldiers to surrender. And okay, well, sorry, lost train of thought. Okay, first they did their basic training, basic army training at Camp Shelby, Mississippi, out in Hattiesburg. But where they went to the intensive uh, language school was in Camp Savage, Minnesota. And um, there was a, look, a lot of linguists came from Hawaii, about two thirds of them did, and coming from a tropical climate like, like Hawaii to the frigid, cold winters of Minnesota was a challenge. And then there was also a challenge of the, the fireplace kept a lot of the soldiers warm. So the soldiers too close to the fireplace were complaining of being too hot, and the soldiers too far away from the fireplace were complaining of being too cold. But nevertheless, they persevered and they learned 
all they needed to know about um, about interrogating Japanese prisoners of war and translating Japanese uh, Imperial Japanese documents. Um, in the Battle of Leyte Gulf, the Japanese Americans got a hold to documents called Z Plan. Filipino guerrillas captured it and sent it to U.S. Army intelligence. And this showed the Japanese where all the Japanese was going to, where their ships were going to be, where their all where their aircraft carriers were going to be, where their stores were going to be, and this the Battle of Leyte Gulf was a very decisive, but at the same time fairly easy victory for the Americans. Um, the the fighter pilots, the U.S. fighter pilots, went up against the Japanese fighter pilots, and they called it the Great Marianas Turkey Shoot um, because they shot down so many um, Japanese aircraft. So God bless the linguist for that. Also, when the main, when one of the key Japanese admirals, Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto, he won't, um, he, his plane was flying out to Japanese held islands for to inspect the islands. Well, some Caucasian linguists who knew Japanese intercepted the codes and intercepted where Yamamoto was going to be, but they were not going to get the U.S. military was not going to get the full go to his fighter pilots to go shoot down Yamamoto until the Japanese American linguist checked it over and make sure the Caucasian linguist's work was correct. And it was correct. And the Japanese American soldier said it's all correct. They were all right, good to go. And so the U.S. ordered the P 38 Lightning fighter planes to go shoot down Yamamoto's plane. And they did. And that was a Big, big morale defeat for the Japanese when Admiral Yamamoto lost his life because he was one of the best commanders that they had, that Japan had. So that's, that, and also it has been proven that the linguist, the Nisei linguist, the Japanese American linguist shortened the war for two years. Um, for two years and that a lot of, uh, and they saved a lot of American lives because they translated a bunch of key documents. Um, the main Japanese American behind um, the, the language school was John Izo, and he was a major. Now, it was rare for Nisei soldiers to be commissioned in the officer ranks, but he became a major. He was drafted into the army before the war, and he became an auto mechanic, and he was just looking forward to getting out and being a lawyer. But when Pearl Harbor was attacked, and Pearl Harbor was attacked, um, he still had his plans, but the white, some white soldiers came to him and said, John, your country needs you. Your country needs you. And he, he had a lot of pride, and he also swelled up, almost swelled up with tears because he said, honestly, this is the first time Americans have called America my country, which he always thought it was because growing up in a home, he always had pictures of Washington. His family always had pictures of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln, and I always said their prayers, always prayed to Jesus. Um, but because of his skin color, a lot of people thought otherwise. But the soldiers who knew John Izzo knew what he was capable of and knew he was a very loyal American, and he helped with the language school. And he was a very strict instructor. Um, a lot of the people that served under him didn't like him, but they commanded a lot. They had a lot of respect for him, too, because he made them the linguist um, that, that they were. Um, also, in the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, that's a forgotten battle of the Pacific Theater. There were some Japanese American families living there, just about two or three, but the Japanese American linguists translated any letters or um, any letters that they had written to their relatives in Japan. Turned out they were not they were not Japanese spies at all, and the Nisei linguists there helped prove their innocence. And a Nisei linguists there went in caves in the Aleutian Islands and persuaded a few Japanese soldiers to surrender. And a bunch of them nearly died in an avalanche, but fortunately, other soldiers were there to wake them up and get them out of the avalanche. That was a scary time for a lot of the linguists as well. Also, in the China-Burma-India theater, a lot of linguists parachuted with some American special ops regiments and then the American OSS, which was the CIA at the time. And Roy Matsumoto got on the speakers and started speaking Japanese to the Japanese soldiers, telling them to charge this way or go this way. And the Japanese soldiers thought it was their own commanders on the broadcaster, but it wasn't. It was a Nisei linguist, Roy Matsumoto. And that caused a lot of Japanese casualties, and that's why America was able to win a lot of successful battles in the China-Burma-India theater. Also, Grand Hirabayashi was there as well, and he was allergic to K rations, to a lot of the um, contents in the MREs, but he prevailed and just ate the bare minimum and kept pursuing because he didn't want to get sent home. He wanted to do his duty for the United States. 
So God bless these brave Nisei linguists, and we need to know about their history. We need to keep it alive. They, there's been a lot of key uh, Nisei linguist museums that have um, been built in Hawaii, and um, there's a lot of sections commemorated in Japanese American museums in Los Angeles that didn't used to be commemorated there. So God bless the brave Nisei linguists, and let's help keep their memory alive, and let's preserve their memory. So anyways, hope everyone's doing well. Take care. God bless them. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.